Um, now, ultimately, how do you think this will impact treatment? Do you, will exacerbation rates go down? Will, will um, kind of the, the more severe um, versions of asthma tend to drop a little? If, if people start using their, their inhalers correctly and, and getting the proper doses of medicine? Well, there's, there's very good research evidence linking poor inhaler technique with poor outcome in both asthma and in COPD. So um, good inhaler technique should result in better control. So that's the, the first thing really. And so if the device is providing feedback, because it, it's, it's, it's very common knowledge that if the person goes to see a doctor within 10 minutes of leaving the doctor's room, very often they've forgotten what the doctor said. Um, and so instruction in a doctor's uh, office um, once a year or once every six months may not be enough to help somebody remember how to use their device correctly. In fact, there's studies which show if someone's inhaler technique is checked and, uh, and remedied every time the person sees the doctor, there's better chance that their outcomes will be, will be better. So um, we don't have any data yet, but theoretically, um, a device like this can help somebody recognize danger and recognize when to call for help. Because an asthma attack, for example, can take up to 10 days to evolve and develop before somebody ends up in the emergency department with a severe attack. And so if the device is detecting both that somebody's using the drug more frequently and also that that inspiratory flow and inspiratory volume is decreasing. Like if you look at the, um, the chart uh, figure eight on the, uh, on the poster, the red lines depict doctor diagnosed attacks of asthma and COPD. And you can see in the first graph, the use of the drug is increasing. So the green dots are going up just before and up until the point where the attack is evolved. The peak inspiratory uh, um, flow, the second, uh, the middle uh, uh, graph, is coming down, as is the uh, volume. So you've got three signals there, which are happening concurrently, which is what we'd expect when somebody's lung function is deteriorating, either in asthma or in COPD. So if the device can provide an early warning signal for somebody that they're running into trouble, um, that certainly could it could help prevent attacks and save lives. Um, some of the work that I did involved asthma death in the United Kingdom. And um, half the people who died from asthma during 2012 either didn't call for help or didn't get help in their final fatal attack. So they didn't recognize the danger signs. So that's one major potential advantage. The other one, as I've uh, alluded to earlier, is if the device can provide feedback to somebody that they're not using the device correctly or that they're using it inappropriately, too much in the case of albuterol and, and asthma, because um, with COPD, sometimes you need to use more of the drug and that's appropriate. But in asthma, it would be inappropriate to have to use increasing amounts of albuterol. So if the device is signaling you're using too much or you're not using the device correctly, then that can be remedied either by video instruction or by seeing a healthcare prof prof professional for uh, uh, further advice and education. Okay. Now, um, the study you're presenting at ERS uh, involved adult patients, but do you believe this could really have a, a big impact on pediatric patients who maybe aren't used to an inhaler or, or just probably have more technical problems than the adults who maybe have been using it for some time? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's age specific. I think inability to use a device goes right across the board. And there are some children that I've looked after who are quite able at the age of four or five to use their device correctly. Because in younger children, we use um, so-called spacer devices, um, which attach to the inhaler that makes it easier to uh, get the coordination and timing right. But um, I think for, for children, children are becoming much more digitally aware than uh, we used to be when we were kids. And so if a child's got an app, for example, there are some 
electronic devices which provide a reminder for a child when to take medication. Hey, you haven't taken your drug today, take it. And also uh, incentives in the form of games where there might be a monster that uh, when you're breathing correctly, the monster runs away. Um, and that's, that's an example of one of the devices that's available. And so you could use these, uh, the electronic devices and software to um, uh, help educate a child, both on the frequency of taking the drug, but also on, on the uh, accuracy and uh, correct uh, inhalation technique. So we need some studies and uh, there are some studies planned. Um, and um, I think uh, time will tell and I'm sure that the future will involve a lot more uh, digital technology, particularly, uh, for example, with what's going on with COVID at the moment.